mine minerals for the corporation, work closely with your dwarven colleagues, all the while fending off deadly adversaries. In this video, let's see how to elevate your gunner game. If you have not seen much footage of this game or are looking for a review, check out my game review linked in the description. I also have a full suite of tutorials for this game and you can find them linked as well. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to be alerted for future videos if you like this content. The Gunner is an interesting mix of crowd control and tank elements. Cut through the bugs with your primaries and protect them from danger with your shield. This dwarf is mainly focused on the close to medium range. The Gunner's combat focus is shielding the team and thinning the crowds while his non-combat focus is providing team access. The Gunner is able to make clutch saves with their shield generator and this is essential equipment at the higher difficulty levels. This class is best suited for players of traditionally tank classes looking to shield their teammates or those of you who just like machine guns. This is a simple mining mission. Deposit your quota of more. The two primary weapons that the gunner has are the Lead Storm powered minigun and the Thunderhead autocan. The Lead Storm powered minigun is a high rate of fire weapon. Its rate of fire makes it easy to switch between targets while holding the trigger down. It does decent damage output and never requires reloading. It will fire until it's empty. The only thing that will stop it, shy of running out of ammo, is overheating. It just jammed! Overheating causes a long jam that can take a while to cool down. It's much quicker to let it get close to overheating and then stop for a moment. Its aim is very poor at first when firing, but quickly narrows in after a moment. This causes initial waste of ammo at distance. The Thunderhead Heavy Auto Cannon is a slower rate of fire weapon. It starts shooting painfully slow and gets faster for the longer that it fires for. It has good damage output with a small area of effect with its explosive tip bullets. This makes it very good when shooting at crowds and peeling armor off of enemies. Its reloads are also painfully slow and need to be planned to avoid being attacked while reloading, if you can. As for the secondaries, the gunner has the Bulldog Heavy Revolver and the BRT-7 Burst Fire Gun. The Bulldog Heavy Revolver is a heavy hitting weapon and is very accurate. This is a great gun to use on targets of transitional range and even far off targets. It's better to use this weapon on specials as it actually hits them harder and would help you preserve your main gun ammo. It has a rather small cylinder, the part that holds the ammunition kind of like a magazine. This means that it needs to be reloaded more often. Lastly, the BRT-7 Burst Fire Gun. This features a 3 shot burst every trigger pull. This does less damage, but shoots three bullets in a burst to make up for it. It is less accurate at range as the barrel rises with recoil, but it is still very effective on specials. Just like the revolver, using it this way will help save some of your primary ammo. Suck on this, you freaking nature! The two special weapons the gunner will carry are the shield generator and the zipline launcher. The shield generator is thrown onto the ground and quickly deploys. It creates an impenetrable shield that can be fired out of from within, but not into. This pushes enemies back and blocks them from re-entering. This tool provides breathing room to the team, used for clutch saves and is essential at the higher difficulties like mentioned earlier. It should be dropped anytime things are getting far too close, the team is taking too much damage, or anytime you feel things are getting a little bit chaotic. This will ensure the team isn't needlessly punished and will give your team room to catch up and save munitions. The zipline launcher is equally important as the shield generator. This tool is shot and spikes on both ends. It is very visible to the team, making them very easy to find and gives the entire team quick access around the caves. This is the most cost-effective way to get the other dwarves into the hard-to-reach areas and progress through the caves. It being so visible also makes the path taken through the complex caves a lot more obvious. It has a limited range and cannot be fired at extreme angles, so it takes some getting used to. Can't do it. The angle's too steep. The gunner's three grenades consist of the sticky grenade, incendiary, and the cluster grenade. The sticky grenade, as its name implies, sticks to enemies or surfaces and then explodes after a little bit of time. It does pretty decent damage with a fair-sized effect radius too, it's just a little different to use. A lot of times, grenades in this game like to bounce all over the place when throwing, where this one will stay exactly where you throw it, which is actually kind of nice. The incendiary grenade releases a flammable liquid on explosion that spreads out into a wide area. This is more of a damage over time grenade as the flames will slowly damage your targets as it sticks to them. It's great to weaken them as they run through an area before they get to you. It still does a fair amount of damage, it just won't kill them immediately. 
Lastly, the cluster grenade does high damage over a large area. When it hits the ground, it sets off several smaller charges that fly up into the air and hit an area around it. This is excellent on big groups of enemies and will reward you with its high effectiveness. Its effect, however, is random each time and it tends to leave a few survivors. Because it has such a large air of effect, it's very easy to cause friendly fire with. The beauty of this game comes with how versatile the loadouts can be and everyone can set themselves up properly for their own gameplay. This is just the loadout that I find works best for me. My recommended loadout for the gunner is the Lead Storm Powered Minigun, the Bulldog Heavy Revolver, and the Cluster Grenade. My recommended modifiers for the Lead Storm Powered Minigun are Improved Platform Stability, Reduced Base Spread by 80%, Oversized Drum, Increase Max Ammo by 600, Hardened Rounds, Increase Armor Breaking by 200%, Lighter Barrel Assembly, Decrease Spin Up Time by 0.4 of a second, Cold as the Grave, Some Heat is Removed from the Gun on Every Kill, and for the Weapon Overclock, Thinned Drum Walls, Increases Max Ammo by 300 and Cooling Rate by 0.5. For the Bulldog Heavy Revolver, perfect weight balance, reduce base spread by 70%, increase caliber rounds, increase damage by 15, hollow point bullets, increase weak point damage by 50%, high velocity rounds, increase damage by a further 15, dead eye, no aim penalty while moving. And for the overclock, homebrew powder, randomizes each shot damage from 80 to 140%. And for the perks, Friendly, take and deal 50% less damage from Friendly Fire. Deep Pockets, hold 15 more minerals. Sweet Tooth, get 30% more healing from consuming red sugar. Also, 20% movement speed bonus for 10 seconds after consuming. Iron Will, once permission, get back into the fight for 12 seconds, making you move faster, hit harder, and resistant to slowdowns. And lastly, Beastmaster, claim a glyphic grunt, making them do 300% more damage. Because who doesn't want a cute bug named Steve fighting for you? Who's a good bug? Yeah, who's a good bug? Alright, before we end, let's cover some tips and tricks for the gunner. Focus on the up close area first, helping the driller clear that area, especially if they have the cryo cannon. They will be expecting someone to kill the frozen targets. If that area is clear, thin the crowd in the medium range. Use your secondary weapons on tough enemies and save the primaries for crowds. Your primaries won't do as much damage to tough enemies and you'll save ammo for it by using your secondary on them. Stay with your team so you are close to provide the shield cover when necessary and cut down the close up bugs. If you are too far away, you won't make it back in time to drop the shield when they really need it. On the topic of the shield, don't be afraid to use it when the pressure is on. Use it whenever things are getting too hot or if you need to revive someone that is surrounded by bugs. It can also be thrown over edges down to players that are down so another teammate in the area can safely revive the down player. Lastly, don't take chances. Try to be the last dwarf standing. I know this isn't exactly entirely reliable, but if you can stay safe, you'll always be around to make those clutch shield saves. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helps you get better at the gunner. If you feel I missed anything or have some questions, drop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to be alerted for future videos. To my current subscribers, I appreciate you all a lot. I also stream on Twitch, and the link for it is linked in the description. That link will bring you to my about page where my schedule is posted. Again, thanks for watching everyone, and happy mining!